I was born in 1931, and I was the youngest of five. Growing up, my dad did relatively well. There wasn't a summer that went by that we didn't have a week or 10 days in some uh, national park somewhere. Life was pretty idyllic. Then, December 7th, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. My dad gathered all of us in the front room and he said that I don't know what's going to happen to your mother and me, but you are all citizens of the United States. We'll just have to see what's going to unfold. I've only seen my dad cry three times. Once was on the 7th of December because he couldn't understand why the land of his birth was now attacking the land of his heart. The second time I saw him cry was when we were boarding the trains to leave San Jose to go off to camp. And the third time was when my mother uh, passed away. On the 29th of May, 1942, we boarded the train. For me as an 11 year old kid, this was, oh boy, an overnight train ride. Once we got on those trains, there were armed guards uh, at end of each car. I was wearing my Cub Scout uniform and a baseball glove and baseball bat. And when I got on the train, the MPs confiscated the bat. First, we went to what were called assembly centers. And then we were transported to Hart Mountain, Wyoming. My dad really loved the United States. He saw this ad where they were looking for teachers under the Army Specialized Training Programs. My dad applied for one of those jobs, was accepted. He was given permission to go to Chicago, Illinois. After um, VJ Day, he was anxious to get back to California. We boarded the train to go cross country. And the day we got back to San Jose was actually Thanksgiving Day, 1945. It really brought new meaning to Thanksgiving Day. It was tough on our, our parents as they were trying to reestablish their businesses. People were really struggling to get back on their feet. When I graduated from San Jose High School, I applied to Berkeley, got in, and as I always told people, I made the dean's list. But it wasn't that good one that you usually think of. It was the other one. I went down to the ROTC department and got my commission as a second lieutenant on graduation. I was waiting for the troop ship to come in. And every day you had to check uh, the bulletin board. And there was a note there, Lieutenant Manetta, please see a transportation officer. Well, I went to see the transportation officer and he said, we're gonna take you to uh, Japan and be tested for your uh, Japanese capability. I ended up being the detachment commander uh, the military intelligence unit where we did all of the translation and interpreting for the headquarters. It was great duty. In the San Jose area, Mr. Ishimatsu was an immigrant from Japan. He said one of the reasons the Japanese Americans were evacuated and interned was that we really didn't have access to the political leaders of those times. And he said, we ought not to let that happen again. So he'd buy maybe two tickets to the Lincoln Day dinner of the Republicans, two tickets for the Jackson Day dinner of the Democrats. I became the beneficiary of one of those tickets. It became possible that I might be appointed to fill a vacancy on the city council in San Jose. In 1971, I was elected mayor. In 1974, a friend of mine called me up. He said, Charlie Goopser is not going to seek re-election. 
you've got to run for Congress. And this is during the whole uh, Watergate time period. I decided to run. When I got sworn in, the only thing I could think of at the time was, what's a little kid like you from San Jose, California, doing in a place like this? It's just hard to imagine. In 1942, uh, being placed on trains under armed guard, transported off to camp, and here uh, some 20-some uh, years later, uh, being sworn in as a member of the Congress. To me, there was nothing more rewarding than to be uh, representing a congressional district and uh, being able to uh, relate to people and their concerns. And I didn't want to be in that position of having someone say, well, I wanted to talk to him, but didn't have a chance to. And so uh, I always had an accessibility process, but I also felt very strongly about accountability. So I, I really enjoyed my uh, 21 years in the House of Representatives. I did that kind of constituency service as a member of the city council, as mayor, and as a member of Congress.